My name is Patrick McCarthy. I'm director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute here at Northwestern, and I'm the chief of cardiac surgery. So over my career, I've probably done about 10,000 heart operations, about 5,000 are heart valve operations, and I'm about half mitral valves and half aortic valves. But I also have a particular interest and experience in tricuspid valve surgery. There was a time when I was doing as many as 100 tricuspid valve operations a year. That stage in my career, I was doing a lot of patients with really advanced heart failure. And these days, I'm doing a little different group. I'm doing very early stage patients, and the valve is leaking for a different reason. So now I probably do about 30 to 40 or 50. Valve surgery of all heart operations, it's still a bit of an art and you know, not just a science. No two are exactly the same. As you do more and more, you get more experience and you see more and more patients with it. A leaky tricuspid valve gradually develops heart failure. So it's quiet at first, but over time the patient develops heart failure symptoms. And then specifically, we call it right heart failure symptoms, which is where patients get fluid in their legs, fluid in their abdomen, and they're also short of breath with that. But also it's damaging the heart. The heart isn't contracting as well because the valve is leaking. The valve ought to be hitting together like this. The most common problem is just that it's pulled apart. The annulus, we call it, is dilated. And so all we do is we put a ring around it and that brings it back together so that the leaflets hit back together properly. If you were going through mitral valve surgery and they tell you that the tricuspid valve is also leaking some, then you just want to know that the surgeon is aware of that and you want to know how much it is leaking. On a scale up to four, where four is the worst, if it's a three or four, it should just be fixed. If it's a two, we fix most of those these days. Even if it's only a one out of four, we'll think about it under different conditions. There is um, a subgroup of patients that are not very common, but we're seeing those more too, where all the other valves are working fine and the only problem they have is a leaky tricuspid valve. These days we see it because people have a permanent pacemaker and the pacemaker wire goes through the valve and it can interfere with function of the valve. And so if you are one of those patients, that's one where you want to pay attention to it because uh, it may only be leaking two or three out of four for a while, but over thousands and millions of heartbeats that can impact your heart function. And so they should be following that carefully. And at some time you might need an operation for that. Here at Northwestern for us, tricuspid like atrial fibrillation is one of those things that we're known to focus on and that, you know, is one of the reasons that people are referred here or that patients choose to come here. There's a lot more recognition on the part of surgeons that it should be addressed. And in fact, if you look at the data, tricuspids are like that. They've gone up five times uh, just over the last 10 years. Across the world, uh, people are paying more attention to it.